Hello everyone, uh, we are going to be solving a problem on uh, single and double shear. Uh, so let me first uh, set up the problem. Uh, this is uh, uh, very similar to many of the other problems uh, that we have seen so far. So problem on uh, single and double shear. especially in uh, support pins uh, for uh, structures. Okay, so I have uh, two bars that are pinned together in the following fashion. Uh, so here is the first one. So this is a horizontal bar. And uh, this is uh, pinned to the wall at location A as shown. So this is A and then at uh, location B, uh, there is another bar that comes and uh, is connected to this bar. Uh, so let's call this bar AB and uh, bar BC. So I have BC come in here, uh, connected here, and uh, C and A are lined up in terms of uh, where they are vertically. So this is uh, C and then uh, this is B. Right, so I have bar AB and then I have bar BC. On the bar AB there is a triangular load distribution given. Uh, intensity of the largest load is uh, given to us as 200 newtons uh, per meter. <coughs> so this is 200 newtons per meter. There is also a couple moment acting at the end of uh, uh, bar AB and this has a magnitude of uh, 600. Uh, newton meters. Uh, some distances are given. Distance from A to C is uh, 3 meters vertically and the distance from A to B um, is uh, 4 meters and remainder of the bar AB has a distance of uh, 2 meters. Alright, so I have the bar BC, I have the bar AB, so here is the bar AB uh, with a triangular load distribution on it as, as you can see from the figure and then I have the bar BC uh, from the looks of it, uh, it seems like a BC is going to be a two force member uh, so this is the bar BC um, as you can see, it is supported by a pin at C and then at the point B, uh, the bars AB and uh, BC are uh, pinned together all right. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is BC, and I have AB, and uh, the couple of uh, things are given to us. Uh, the pins at A and C are said to be in uh, double shear. Okay, so uh, pin A and pin C are in double shear. And the pin at B is uh, said to be in single shear. The pin at B connects the bar BC and the bar AB. Okay, so this connects BC uh, to bar AB. And uh, we are also given uh, the failure uh, shear stress values for the pins and a factor of safety as well. Uh, so single and double shear, main heading. Uh, then I have tau fail for all the pins are uh, given to us as uh, 250 megapascals. And a factor of safety in shear is given to us as uh, 2.5. And uh, what are we supposed to find? Uh, we are supposed to find the uh, allowable diameters of all these pins. Okay, so there is a, a pin here and this is connected to the wall. Similar story, um, pin at C is also in uh, double shear. And then I have a pin uh, here which is uh, connecting the bar BC and the bar AB. And uh, so we need to find the allowable diameters of all the pins uh, 
assuming that pin A and C are in double shear and then pin B is in single shear. And uh, uh, to just uh, help us understand this problem better, uh, we are given the top view of uh, the pins at A and C. Uh, so looking down on uh, here, looking from the top, uh, so top view of the pins A and C, they look uh, pretty much the same and so one view is uh, sufficient for us. Uh, so here is the top view. We have um, the uh, hinge uh, system here which is uh, fixed to the wall and the pin system here which is uh, fixed to the wall and then I have the bar AB or the bar BC come in and uh, it is uh, connected by means of the pin as shown. So we are not showing the entire bar, uh, we are just showing some representative sample of this bar. And then I have a pin that is coming down and passing through the leaves on the top and the bottom and then connecting through the bar. Right. So this is uh, the pin that we are looking for. So this is uh, our and see they both are having the same uh, perspective view from the top and uh, let us also look at uh, the top view uh, so looking down from here so top view of uh, this is a uh, view uh, one let's call this one and then this is view two uh, so this represents view one and view two you can call this as either pin a or pin c and then uh, we look at the top view for pin b uh, this is going to be uh, view three so top view of uh, pin B, uh, here is that uh, particular view. We are going to be seeing the entire bar AB. I am not going to draw the entire thing of course. Uh, I will be drawing uh, some kind of a representative sample of the entire bar AB. And then at this particular point I will be seeing the bar BC connected to the bar AB by means of the pin. We are not going to be drawing the entire bar BC as well. So this is the bar AB and this is the bar BC and this is going to be the pin at B. Now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, particular picture and then I'm going to tilt it by 90 degrees uh, so that uh, the view that we see is uh, as follows. So tilt it by 90 degrees and then uh, this is what we are going to be seeing. Entire bar AB, then I have the bar BC and then I have a pin that is connecting these two together. Right, so this is going to be pin at B. Alright, so here is the problem. I have a bar AB, I have a bar BC, I have a triangular load distribution as you can see in the figure. Um, this has an intensity of uh, 200 uh, Newton meters, uh, Newton per meter, I'm sorry. And I have uh, a couple moment of uh, magnitude 600 Newton meters which is acting at the end of the bar AB. We are told that the pins at A and C are in double shear, the pin at B is in single shear and uh, this connects the bar AB to the bar BC. And uh, we are told that the failure shear stress for the pins is 250 MPa for each of the pins and for each of the pins the factor of safety is uh, 2.5 and uh, we need to find out the allowable diameter over all the pins uh, A, B and C. And uh, you are seeing the top view so you are looking at this uh, from the top looking and uh, we got to see the view for pins A or C, they both look the same here. This could be either the bar AB or the bar BC, this one here. Then I have the top view of the pin at B, if I look at this, this is uh, view 3, as I said labeled here, uh, this is going to be uh, view 3 as labeled there. And uh, we see that uh, this is the bar AB, this is the bar BC, the pins are connecting, uh, connected, uh, connecting the bar uh, AB and BC. I take this one and I flip it by 90 degrees and this is the view that I see. And this is pin AB, this is going to be the bar uh, pin B, I'm sorry, this is the bar AB and then this is the bar uh, BC. Okay. Uh, so the first step in this problem is to uh, complete the statics part and uh, this implies that we need to find the forces at all these pins. Uh, so let us do that uh, carefully. 
Okay, so first of all, we need to draw the free body diagram of uh, the entire uh, system. Uh, we have to see, uh, before we start drawing free body diagrams, we see that uh, the bar BC is a two-force member, and then uh, I can draw the free body diagram of bar AB and BC. And uh, just a little bit of uh, common sense, I look at the forces acting, I look at the couple moment, uh, there's a couple moment of 600 Newton meters, which is acting uh, right at the end of the bar AB. As we have discussed in class, uh, the location of the couple moment is important. This is not something that we can just move along the length of the bar. Of course, the idea is that the couple moment um, has the same effect uh, wherever it is acting on the entire uh, rigid body. It produces a rotation of 600 Newton meters or a moment of 600 Newton meters about a certain point that we are interested in. Alright, uh, so we're going to draw the free body diagram of AB, draw the free body diagram of BC. As we can see, uh, the forces are pushing down on the bar AB, which means that the bar BC is trying to prevent the bar AB from going down, and so the bar BC is going to be in a state of tension. Right, so since this is the case, uh, let us draw BC, and then let us draw AB, uh, the free body diagrams, and then let us find out the uh, reaction forces and the force on the bar BC. Uh, so let me first draw the force on uh, bar BC. So BC is a two force member, as you can see. Right, so here is the bar BC. I have the force acting, this is point C, this is the point B. And I have uh, at the point B and at the point C I have a force FBC. And assumed to be in tension. Right, so this is going to be the force FBC. This is also the force FBC. I have a nice uh, slope triangle, 3, 4 and 5, as you can see from the figure. So the vertical is 3, horizontal is 4 and then the hypotenuse is 5. And so I can uh, draw components of FBC at the point B. Uh, this is going to be in the following directions. Uh, so this is going to be 4 fifths and 3 fifths uh, FBC. So this is going to be 4 fifths FBC horizontal and uh, 3 fifths FBC uh, vertical. <coughs> now one thing to keep in mind is that uh, the force that you're seeing here, uh, these forces, FBC at the point C or at the point B, this is the force exerted by the pin at C on the bar BC. So if I, if I look at this, this is the force of the pin at C on the bar BC. And uh, likewise, this is the force of the pin at uh, B on bar BC. Right, so these are uh, some key points that we can note down because uh, this establishes what the total force on a pin at C or what the total force on a pin, uh, pin at B is uh, going to be. Uh, next thing, I'm going to draw the free body diagram of the bar AB uh, right here. So look at the bar AB. Um, I have the following. I'm going to lose um, the thickness of the bar uh, for the time being. Uh, so I have uh, the pin reactions at uh, A, so I'm going to call them as AX and AY. I'm going to choose arbitrary directions. Uh, so I'm going to choose AX uh, pointing this way and I'm going to choose AY pointing up. Okay, so this is going to be AX and uh, this is AY. Uh, so here is the bar AB. This is the key. Uh, element here. Uh, I first of all have the couple moment acting at the end of bar AB so that has a magnitude of uh, 600 uh, Newton meters. Then I have the distributed load of intensity 200 Newton per meter so this is over a span of 6 meters. Area of the triangle is half times 6 times 200 so I get 600 Newtons. Where does it act? It acts at a distance of two-thirds the base from the pointed end so it leans towards the heavier side of the triangle so it's at a distance of 4 meters from the end of the bar AB. Alright so I first uh, draw the uh, distributed load in a, in a dotted line and um, this is the situation and then it is acting at a distance of uh, 4 meters from the end of the uh, bar AB so this is the end of the bar AB so 4 meters from down there so that's going to be uh, a force of magnitude 600 newtons and it has a distance of uh, 2 meters from A because it's 4 meters from uh, uh, the end of the bar right so I have some distances here uh, so this is going to be 2 meters and then all the way here is going to be uh, 4 meters. 
Now we also need to draw the uh, force of uh, the bar AB uh, back on the pin at B, right? So this one uh, we see that it has to be equal and opposite to the forces that we have shown there. And so I'm just going to draw equal and opposite arrows. Uh, so this is going to be 3 fifths FBC and that's going to be 4 fifths FBC. Right, so this is going to be 3 fifths FBC and uh, this is going to be 4 fifths FBC. I know the distance all the way from point A uh, to the point B is uh, going to be 4 meters as uh, given in the problem. Alright, so we have the free body diagrams complete. Uh, we have the uh, pin reactions at A. These are the forces exerted by the pin at A on the bar AB. Right, so these two here, these are the forces exerted by the pin at A on the bar AB. <coughs> right, and uh, so we are ready to solve this problem. Uh, as usual, the solution is uh, fairly uh, straightforward because of the statics part involved here. Uh, so we some moments about the point A that will give us uh, FBC. Once we find FBC, we can find AX and AY. I'm going to do the summation of the moments part uh, here quickly. Uh, so summing moments about the point A, set them all equal to zero. I get the following. FBC, 3 fifths FBC produces a counterclockwise moment, distance of 4 meters. So 3 fifths FBC times 4, couple moments 600 Newton meters clockwise, so that's negative, and then 600 Newton force clockwise moment of uh, 600 times 2 at the point A. So this is going to be 600 times 2, that's equal to 0. So solve for FBC. FBC uh, will give us a value of uh, 750 Newtons. Alright, so uh, what we have done so far, we drew the free body diagram of BC, this is a two force member. And why is that? That's because there are forces acting at only two points on its body, at the point B and at the point C. It does not matter how many forces act, as in this case there are four of them acting at a total of two points, but it is important that there are forces acting at only two points on this body. This is an example of a straight two force member which means that there will be no bending moments, internal bending moments or there will be no internal bending stresses which are produced in this uh, particular uh, bar. This will either be in a state of uh, tension or compression or shear, uh, depending on how we section it. Alright, so we have FBC, uh, 750 Newtons, we drew the free body diagram of bar AB, uh, pin reactions at A, I have equal and opposite forces at the point B, uh, distributed load reduced to a single resultant force and then I have this couple moment of uh, 600 Newton meters acting at the end. And uh, we likewise uh, go ahead and uh, find out AX and AY. This is uh, done using uh, regular summation of uh, forces uh, in the X and the Y direction. So uh, let's do that quickly here. Uh, so summation of forces along the X axis. Forces uh, pointing to the right uh, being positive. What are the forces? I have AX pointing to the right, 4 fifths FBC pointing to the left. Those balance each other out. Right? So I'm going to have AX is equal to 4 fifths. FBC, FBC is 750 Newtons, uh, so I get AX to be equal to 600 Newtons. Summation of forces along the uh, Y axis uh, being equal to 0, I get uh, similar such stuff for uh, AY. Force AY pointing up, 600 pointing down, 3 fifths pointing up. We don't include the couple moment in the force balance, it does not play any kind of a role there, so this is going to be AY, then I have 3 fifths. FBC minus 600 and FBC is 750 so I solve for uh, AY so I get AY uh, to be equal to plus 150 Newtons. Right, so in summary I have uh, the following forces. I have the force FBC as uh, 750 Newtons, then I have the force AX as uh, 600 Newtons, I have the force AY as 150 newtons. Now I can find uh, the total force on the pin at A. Uh, look at this. Uh, the total force at this particular point, AX is pointing to the right and AY is pointing up, which means that uh, the pin at A is exerting a force. Uh, so if, if, if we look at this here, I'm just going to draw only the situation at A. Uh, so look at uh, AB 
near the point A. Right, so if I draw uh, that particular uh, point here, so you see that uh, the force AX is uh, pointing to the right. And then I have the force AY which is pointing up. And uh, so this is AX, uh, so this was pointing to the right, this was pointing up. And you see that the resultant of these two is going to be a force uh, which is somewhere in here. Uh, since AX is larger, it's going to be closer to AX. And this is going to be the force FA. This is the resultant force which is a square root of AX square and AY square or FA is approximately uh, 619 <coughs> Newtons if you do the square root of the sum of the squares. This is the force exerted by the pin on the bar AB and this makes absolute sense if you go back to the uh, uh, figure that is drawn you see that all these forces here and all these couple moments they are trying to take this bar AB and then they are trying to slide it down they are trying to slide it down and uh, to the uh, uh, lower portion uh, slightly towards my left which means that the pin at A has to be exerting a force on the bar AB so that the bar AB is kept in uh, equilibrium and so that the bar AB doesn't get ripped out and uh, so this force has to be pointing at an angle and pointing up and that's exactly what we are getting here which means that if I draw the pin at A then that force should be equal and opposite to the force here because that is a force exerted by the bar AB back on the pin at A. Right, so if I look at the pin at A, right, I'm going to be looking at uh, the uh, top view of this pin and uh, here is essentially what we're doing. Uh, the first thing is uh, this is in double shear. Right, so if I'm looking at the top view of this pin, uh, here is what we will be seeing. Right, so here is the top view of the pin and uh, the situation that is taking place at uh, the pin at A. So these are attached to the walls here. Then I have the bar AB. This is the top view, mind you. So the forces that you see are going to be at an angle. They are not necessarily horizontal. And uh, you see that uh, the force uh, on the pin at A. Now I'm going to break it at uh, two locations and uh, you'll see that this is in double shear. So since this is in double shear, I'm going to break it here and I'm going to be breaking it there and then I'm going to be looking at uh, that little piece uh, so this little cut piece um, we're going to be looking at that uh, so if you look at that this is just the pin right this is the pin with uh, two of the sections that are uh, broken and uh, you can see uh, there are these faces that are now exposed on the particular pin and uh, what we are saying is that the total force which is acting on this pin is trying to push it down this is a force exerted by the bar on the pin the bar AB is trying to fall down because of the forces acting on that bar as you can see from here bar AB is trying to fall down, trying to come down a little this way so the pin at A is exerting a force to keep it in steady balance or in equilibrium and so I'm going to have a force which is trying to push down on the uh, pin this is the force FA, this is the total force of the pin, 619 newtons this is pushing down on the pin and so I'm going to have shear forces acting on the exposed faces of the pin right? so I'm going to have a force acting here and a force acting there and this is going to be the shear force on the pin at A and as you can see from force balance these two forces add up and should be equal to FA which means that from force balance VA should be equal to FA divided by 2 right and the exact same thing is going to happen at uh, pin C uh, if we look at the pin at C uh, let us take a closer look at that uh, situation here uh, so look at the pin at C, um, we know that, um, so pin C, this is also said to be in double shear, and uh, if I look at the situation, I have um, the bar BC, right, uh, so on the bar BC, the bar BC was said to be in a state of tension, and uh, so the force are pointing this way so this is FBC this is pin C our position C position B this is force FBC now this force we said was the force of the pin C on the bar BC at the point C which means that if I take a look at the force exerted by the bar BC back on the pin that force should be pulling down on the pin 
Does this make sense from a physical perspective? Of course it does make sense, right? This is because you see that the bar BC is in a state of tension, which means that this load is trying to drag the bar BC and so that is probably going to rip off the pin uh, at C. So there is going to be a force that is going to be pulling down on the pin at C uh, because of the nature of the loading uh, that is applied. Right? So BC is in a state of tension, so this force on the pin C, if I look at the pin at C, this, uh, the top view of the pin at C, looks very similar to the pin at A, except for the fact that the forces on that pin are not the same as the forces on pin A. Right, so this is going to be the top view, this is the bar BC, we do not show the entire thing. Um, then I have the pin which is uh, being pushed in so that the bar BC is uh, held fixed without any kind of uh, X or a Y motion, that's why you have the reacting forces. So this is the bar BC, this is the pin at C and uh, we see that the force of the pin has to be pulling down on the pin and uh, this was exactly the similar situation that you saw at uh, pin A as well uh, if you look at pin A the force was uh, going to be pulling down on the pin and the pin was trying to keep it in uh, balance or static equilibrium by exerting shear forces right so if I look at the pin at C uh, we do exactly the same thing since it is in double shear I cut it off at two locations as you can see here and then I look at uh, that entire cut piece I draw that cut piece so here is the pin at C I expose uh, the portions that we have cut uh, by means of these uh, squiggly lines uh, this is an exposed region this is also an exposed region the force of the bar BC is pulling down on the pin right so this is going to be a force that is pulling down on the pin so this is going to be force FBC and so I'm going to have on the exposed faces of the pin, I'm going to have shear forces VC and VC which is trying to hold the pin in equilibrium. We neglect any moment balances on the pin because we say the pin is very small in dimension. It's equal to that of a point. And so you see that VC is going to be FBC divided by 2. And uh, this goes back to our saying that if you have a pin in double shear, then the total shear force on that pin is equal to half the total force acting on that pin. Okay? So we will write this down uh, so that the next time you see a problem on double shear you can directly jump onto these uh, conclusions because we have actually gone through them. Uh, so pin and double shear. So for any pin and double shear uh, we are going to say the following. Uh, the shear force on the pen is half the total force on that pen. It is important that it is half the total force on that pen, right? So which means that at the pin A, this is going to be the total force FA divided by 2, which is uh, 619 divided by 2, so many newtons. And then if I look at the pin at C, this is going to be FBC divided by 2, which is going to be 750 divided by 2, so many newtons. This is because pin A and C are both in double shear all right so using this uh, we can calculate the allowable diameters for the pins at a and c all right uh, so let's take a look at this uh, we know that the uh, tau at pin a this has to be equal to va divided by the area of the pin at A and uh, we assume that it's a circular diameter so uh, it's a circular cross section so the diameter is what we're looking for here uh, so this has to be equal to tau allowable which is uh, tau fail divided by the factor of safety in tau right, and similarly uh, we can say that uh, for the pin at C tau C which is VC divided by the area of the pin at C is going to be equal to tau allowable in order to find the limiting value this is going to be tau fail divided by the factor of safety in shear 
So using these two, uh, we can find out the following. So I'm going to use uh, from equation one, and then this is equation two. Uh, so from equation one, V A is uh, 619 divided by two by the area of cross section pi by four times the diameter of the pen A square. This is going to be tau fail, which was 250 megapascals, but that is 250 times 10 to the power six pascals, so newtons per meter square divided by the factor of safety was 2.5 right and uh, from this I can find out uh, phi at A and uh, this is going to be approximately 1.98 times 10 to the power minus 3 meters because the answer is going to be in meters and uh, this means that phi A is approximately 1.98 or 2 millimeters and the idea is this is a limiting diameter of the uh, uh, pin at A, which means that the diameter of the pin at A cannot go less than 1.98. And uh, if we just uh, sneak in the uh, calculations for the pin at C, then this is going to be uh, 750 divided by 2, FBC by 2, and pi by 4, phi C square. This is the same failure stress because uh, perhaps the material for the pin is the same, uh, maybe some form of uh, mild steel. Uh, so upon solving, I get phi C uh, to be slightly larger. This is going to be around 2.2 10 to the power minus 3 meters. Or uh, if we write this in millimeters, diameter of pin at C is 2.2 millimeters. Of course, these are small, uh, but then they are also very resilient creatures. Right, so pin and double shear, the key fact is that the shear force on the pin is going to be equal to half the total force on the pin. And once we know the shear force, then we can just make use of the definitions of shear stress. Average uh, shear stress is the average shear force by the area of cross section. And uh, if you want to find allowable values, you set this equal to the allowable stress, which is less than the failure stress uh, due to the factor of safety that we um, provide. And uh, this way we can calculate the diameter of the pins. Last thing we need to do is uh, uh, calculate the diameter of uh, the pin at B and uh, let's do this. Uh, let's take a closer look at the pin at B. Uh, so we are told that the pin at B is in uh, single shear. So the pin at B is in uh, single shear. Uh, so the first thing we are going to do is uh, we are going to revisit the top view of this uh, particular pin uh, which was given to us earlier. I am just uh, looking back on that particular paper. You see this is the top view given to us and then we tilted it and we obtained uh, something that looks like this. Uh, so I am going to draw the same thing. Okay, so uh, pin at B, uh, if we drew the top view, this was supposed to be the top view. I had the pin here holding together bars BC and the bar AB. So this was the bar BC. This was the uh, bar AB. And uh, this was the pin at uh, B. Now we take this creature and then we tilted it uh, by 90 degrees to get a better view of what's going on and uh, we have the following situation I have the bar AB and then I have the bar BC slightly smaller in diameter perhaps and then I have the pin and this pin is uh, sliding in through here this is uh, the bar AB and then this is the bar BC. We know that the bar BC is in a state of tension and this is the top view. So looking down from the top, we know that the force has to be this way, which means that the force on the bar AB has to be equal and opposite uh, at the point B. So this is uh, something that we're looking at the point B. Uh, so this is a localized view. And looking at events taking place very close to the point B. So this is the pin here and uh, you see that in this uh, particular situation it is uh, sufficient for me to make just one cut. Right? So I look at that one particular cut and uh, here is the cut. I can draw either the top or I can draw the bottom. I'm going to draw both the pieces uh, just for the sake of uh, uh, completion. Um, so I have uh, the bar AB, a little bit of that. This is all events taking place at the pin B. Here is the cut and then I have the remaining portion and then this comes out here and then I have the bar BC. Right, so here is the total pin. 
and I know that this is the force FBC at that point and uh, so I'm going to have equal and opposite force FBC this is localized view at the point B which means that if this is the direction of the force I'm going to have a shear force on the pin this is going to be VB this is the force on the pin FBC then I'm going to have a shear force on the exposed section of the pin and you see that in this uh, particular situation VB is equal to the force on the pin and so you see if you have a situation of single shear you just need one cut and since you're doing only one cut, you're exposing only one of the shear forces and this means that the shear force on the pen has to be equal to the total force on the pen, as you can see from here, right? So single shear. Implies that the total force on the pen is equal to the shear force on the pen, or internal. So, as you can see here, the total force is FBC, the internal shear force, as you can see, is uh, VB. And so, I have VB is equal to FBC, and that was uh, 750 uh, Newtons, as we had solved earlier. And uh, this allows us to find the um, allowable diameter of the pin at B. Uh, this is because I know that uh, tau at B is going to be VB by the area of cross section at B and uh, so this is going to be <coughs> 750 by pi by 4 phi uh, B square and we set this allowable value to equal this particular ratio which is nothing but the ratio of the failure to the factor of safety shear stresses and uh, so 750 Newtons area pi by 4 phi b square this is going to be uh, 250 10 to the power 6 divided by factor of safety which is dimensionless upon solving I get a value in meters and uh, this is going to be 3.1 times 10 to the power minus 3 meters or the diameter of the pen at b is approximately 3.1 millimeters. This is the limiting value of the diameter. The diameter cannot go lower than this, which means that the stresses, shear stresses will go higher than the allowable stress, which is not, uh, not a good thing. This is not something that we expect the pen to be able to handle at some point. All right, and uh, one last thing we could do is uh, we could draw the state of uh, shear stress on the pen at A, if, if, uh, if we look at that. So, state of shear stress. on the pen A. This, this can be applied to any of the pens. I go back to the figure of uh, the pen A uh, that we looked at. Uh, so go back to this particular figure here and uh, we see that I have the uh, exposed section of the uh, pen. So this is the exposed section of the pen and I have the remaining exposed section of the pen. That was the cut that we performed. We know that the total force on this was um, FA and I know that there is a shear force acting at either end, as you can see here. So this is going to be VA, and uh, this was also VA. Now, I first draw an area element. I need to draw the state of stress. This is the state of pure shear stress, right? Because there are no normal stresses acting on this pen. And so I first draw the area element. Here is the area element that I draw on the exposed phase. I know that the direction of the shear stress has to be the same as the direction of the shear force. So this is going to be tau. Right, so this is going to be tau at A. Now I take this area element and I draw it as a volume element. So I take this out, siphon it out, draw it as a volume element. I have the following. And complete the cube. Uh, this is supposed to be a cube, of course. This is the face that I see. On the face that I see, I'm first of all going to have a shear stress as marked in the same uh, area element as you see there. So this is going to be tau at A. Right, so this is going to be tau at A. Now I know that uh, in order for equilibrium to hold true, I need to have something on the back face. Right, so on that particular face, I need to have an equal and opposite tau at A. Right, so that's going to be tau at A. 
which means that in order to balance this completely I need to have something on the top and the bottom faces so there's going to be one coming this way and then on the bottom face I'm going to have one going this way that is the state of complementary shear we know that shear is complementary in property a transverse shear causes a longitudinal shear and vice versa so this is also going to be tau a and that is also going to be tau a and this is the transverse shear because you see that this is the length of the uh, pen and this is the shear force so this is the transverse shear and uh, this causes a longitudinal shear and uh, this is the complementary property of uh, shear this is the and uh, this is the state of stress on the volume element which is uh, taken from the pen and uh, uh, likewise uh, we can draw the state of stress on uh, several other volume elements if necessary uh, sometimes the state of stress can be a combined state of stress in this case this is a state of pure shear Okay, so this is pure shear and uh, uh, just as an example just as uh, something uh, to quickly wrap up the problem um, if I look at uh, the following uh, situation I want to uh, uh, rehash uh, how to draw the state of stress on a volume element uh, let us assume uh, that we have the following situation so some arbitrary loading all I want to do is draw the state of uh, stress okay so I have uh, uh, some kind of a beam here and I have some forces acting on the beam I have support reactions let's say um, support reactions here I have some force acting on the beam and then these are applied forces right so let's call this as uh, some AX, some AY and then some BY and uh, these are forces F1, these are forces F2, these are applied loads. Now let's say that I'm interested in uh, the uh, section between point A and where the load is applied. So if this is the section that I'm interested in, I'm going to take that entire section and then look at the situation there and I see that the force AX is pointing this way and I have the force AY pointing this way. I know that according to the sign convention the normal force has to be pointing away from the cut but then this will give me a negative answer. Negative answers do not make much sense when you are talking about stresses and so I am going to point the normal force on the cut in this particular direction. All right. I am going to have a shear force, I am going to point the shear force in a direction equal and opposite to what I see as the only other force in the vertical direction. So this is the shear force V and then I am going to have a bending moment. Uh, we are at this point in time not very interested in the bending moment. Alright, uh, so I want to draw the state of stress on a volume element taken from that uh, cut section. Uh, which means that uh, this is my view now. Right, so I view it this way, I take this entire piece, I tilt it towards us. Right, so here is that entire cut section and I know that uh, this is the rest of the piece and on that particular cut section I know there are two forces there is a normal force which is acting into the cross section in the following manner there is a shear force which is acting along the cross section in this particular manner so this is a shear force so I first draw an area element right so here is my area element. On that area element I draw the nature of the uh, shear stress. The shear stress is going to be the same as the direction of the shear force right? which means that the direction of the shear stress is going to be downwards. So that's going to be tau and then I see what is the direction of the normal stress. The direction of the normal stress has to be in the same direction as the normal force. So I'm going to have a normal force or a normal stress which is pushing in to this area element right there. Uh, so this is going to be my sigma and then this blue arrow here is going to be my tau and this is the area element and I'm going to take this area element and I'm going to draw it into a volume element. Right? So I first of all uh, draw the volume element as, as you will be seeing here. So this is the face that I am viewing. I complete the uh, uh, volume element uh, by drawing what is uh, somewhat of a cube I have the remaining 
uh, faces of the cube drawn as dotted lines and the first thing I do is I shade the face that I see right so here is the face that I see on that particular face I have a shear stress that shear stress is going to be acting down then I complete the shear stresses on the remaining faces I'm going to have a shear stress on the back face um, if I shade the back face here right so if I look at that I'm going to have equal and opposite uh, shear stresses so that's going to be pointing up here and then I know that uh, there are going to be complementary shear stresses which are on the top and the bottom uh, so I'm going to have one this way and then one on the bottom which is going to be acting uh, in this particular direction uh, so I'm just going to have tau's first this is also tau this is a tau and uh, this is also a tau so this is a transverse and it causes a longitudinal but to complete this, I also need the normal stresses. Say. The normal stresses are acting in a direction that is pushing into the volume element. And so the first thing I'm going to do is draw the normal stress this way, which means I need to have something equal and opposite in the back phase. So I'm going to have something on the back phase that is acting this way. And so this is going to be sigma. And this is going to be sigma. And so this is going to be the state of stress. A volume element this is the combined state of stress of course we have not drawn the bending stresses uh, we will uh, look at that at some point in time towards the end of the semester uh, but then this includes average shear stresses and then average normal stresses and these both have to be shown all right so going back to the problem uh, we we want to wrap things up uh, we go back and see uh, what we were asked to do in this problem uh, look at the first page of the problem I have the bar AB, I have the bar BC, BC is a two force member, pins A and C are in double shear, the pin at B is in single shear. Uh, we need to find the maximum, uh, minimum allowable diameter of these pins, right? And uh, we're given the failure stress values and the factor of safety. Uh, so we established that uh, if you have a pin in a single shear, then the internal shear force on a pin is equal to the total force on a pin. So for example, pin B was in single shear. But then uh, we also established that if you have a pin in double shear, then the shear force on the pin, the internal shear force on the pin, is half the total force on that particular pin. And uh, making use of these, uh, we go through the calculations and we found out uh, the pin diameters at uh, A, B and C. And uh, this was a pin diameter at B, 3.1 millimeters. And then uh, pin diameters at A and C were also obtained. And uh, lastly, uh, we looked at an arbitrary loading situation. Uh, we tried to draw the state of stress on the volume element. This is a combined state of stress. It's combined because you have normal and shear stresses acting. We have missed out on bending stresses, uh, but we will be marking that as well in, uh, in a very short time, uh, towards the end of the semester. Uh, we can do the same thing on uh, a pin element as well uh, but a pin is in a state of pure shear because there are no normal forces acting on the pin here and uh, so I draw the area element first and then I draw the volume element this is taken from the pin at A. Alright thank you very much.